Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I work down at, uh, as a lecturer down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, uh, a continuation of the uh, Kawasaki Sherpa, Super Sherpa, sorry, Super Sherpa 250. Uh, one of the tasks is I've got a couple of valves to lap in. So this is a very short video showing you how to lap in valves or grind in valves as otherwise known. Now, the reason why valves need to be lapped in is obviously those valves are acting as a valve. They are, you know, when they're open, they're allowing gases to, to move from one side of the valve to the other. Uh, it could be an inlet valve, it's allowing the mixture to come in. It could be an exhaust valve, letting the exhaust gases to go out. But when they're closed, they're supposed to be pretty much airtight, i.e. no leakage. And if the valve seat is damaged, burnt, pitted, whatever, then uh, it's not going to actually seal and we're going to get leakage which is going to result in a reduced compression, make the engine bad to start, all that kind of stuff. So it's very important that you do inspect the valve seats and the valve, the edge of the valve that seals against the seat and if it doesn't look very good then you should fix it and usually to fix it if there's enough valve, valve margin left and you can google that, if there's enough valve margin left, oh watch my video, there's a video on valve margin. Uh, if there's enough valve margin left, then you can lap those valves in. Obviously, when you're lapping the valve in, it takes some of the material off the valve, so the metal wears away, and as with the valve seat as well. So you need to make sure that you've got enough material left, so that once you've lapped it in, you, you, you know, the valve still is within specification. So, you're going to need what I call a sucky stick, and that's a piece of wood with a little different sized rubber suckers on the end, and that will become apparent what you're going to use that for shortly. And some valve grinding paste. Now there are different grades of valve grinding paste. You can get, you know, just like the sandpaper, you can get mild, medium, coarse grit, that kind of stuff. Um, this one looks like, I think the only thing that tells me is the actual label. This is fine. I wonder if we've got medium. No, all we have at the moment is fine. That'll be okay because these valves, they're not horrendous. So we should be okay. Right, to the head. Okay, so I'm doing this bit off camera because it'd be disgusting for you to see. But uh, what you need to do, basically, is put some spit on the end of there. It's a very technical thing. It'd be in all the workshop manuals. A bit of saliva on that rubber. There you go, look, and the mechanic spit. That's what we need to do. Okay, right, nice. Get your valve, valve number one, and that came out of exhaust valve hole number one there, look. And we're going to stick that valve on the end of that rubber. Now, if it doesn't stick too well, we're going to have to sand the head of the valve uh, because it's got become, it's, got, it's not smooth, basically, with all the carbon build up on it. But if it does stick, oh, there we go, cool. Okay. And then, get your valve grinding paste, and I'm going to get on my hands, I'm going to use a, let's use a little screwdriver, let's give it a little stir up, it's very important, because this stuff does separate if it's been stood a long time. Okay, there we go, lots and lots of valve grinding paste. Just grab some of that, and just chuck it on the valve around that sealing surface area. You can see on there, look, it's a bit dull and non-shiny. You don't need a great deal of it. Stick that back in there for later. We'll need that later. Now, very important, absolutely critical, in fact, that you don't get any valve grinding paste on the valve stem itself. Because if we get valve grinding paste between the stem and the valve guide, it will very quickly destroy the valve and the valve guide. And it's going to get really expensive to fix. Okay, and then all we do is insert the valve in there like that. And then... We just start to turn it. Just keep doing this. And you've got to keep bringing it up and moving it around a little bit to a different position to get a nice even grind. It also helps to bring some more of the grind bite ground <laughs> grinding paste onto the valve contact area. And usually three or four minutes per valve is 
ample, but it just depends what condition these valves are in. Okay, now you may not be as lucky as me in the fact that the valve doesn't stay on your sucker for very long. I've been quite fortunate today. So far. And then if you just clean off that valve grinding paste, the old paste, you'll be able to see how you're getting on. And if you've got a nice smooth surface. Now, whatever you do, don't be tempted to spray it with cleaner because all you'll do is wash that grinding paste down into the valve guide and if you don't clean it all out you're going to have major problems. Okay, how's that looking? That's pretty good. Just check the old valve. Get all the paste off there. That's not looking too bad actually. I can maybe give it another minute or two. Get it as good as I possibly can. But yeah, things are coming up pretty well. And the same goes with the seat. So I'll give it some more and then we'll do a close up for you. Oh, sucker. What was he saying earlier on? Okay. Excellent. Right, let's give it a bit of a clean up. I reckon we're about there with that one. It doesn't take long, unless you've got lots and lots of valves to do, and they take bloody ages. It's really important you get all that valve grinding paste out. Destroyed engines, not good stuff at all. Okay, that's the valve guide, sorry, the valve seat cleaned up. Let's just give the head of the valve a bit of a clean too. Right, time for a close-up. Okay, so I'm not entirely sure how well this is going to come out on camera because you know it's not the greatest, but we'll just try and do a bit of a bit of a zoom in for you. So you can see now we've got a really even come on, focus camera. Thank you, a really even clean valve seat around there and going onto the valve as well bloody good actually it's come out really well considering the condition it was in before that's excellent right let's get an old valve and compare one to the other so that's the condition of the of the valve before we ground it and you can see there's pits there's pits in there where the valve surface is damaged and it quickly goes out of focus when you zoomed in, doesn't it? Okay, so that's pretty bad. And then we go across to the new valve, the one that we've ground, and you can see that the difference much smoother. That'll give us a really good seal. And the same goes for the valve seat as well. Look, you see, nice and smooth. All the pitting's gone. Go across to the the old valve seat. And you can see there, look, again, there's pitting in it, it's glazed, it's all shiny and black, and there's carbon deposits in the metal. Not good at all. Okay, so that's it. Valve grinding, or grinding valves in, lapping valves in. It's actually a really simple task. What you do need, though, is some valve grinding paste. And this kind of stuff should be available at any of your local 
car auto parts stores and there are different grades um, take a look and see how badly pitted and damaged those valve seats are before you choose what to get but you sh you should always finish with fine you know if you, if you have a really badly damaged valves and there's enough margin left then maybe a medium or a coarse grit just to get started uh, and then always get fine to finish with otherwise you're not going to get a really good seal I don't think this one's made by Holtz I'm sure there are many many different brands out there and one tub will probably last you a lifetime I've, I know I've had this one God, what was it? We, must be at least five years I've had that and it's, it's hardly gone down you know so probably be part of my inheritance to Benjamin <laughs> Okay, I hope you found that video helpful, chaps. Uh, my name's Andy Young, and you've been watching my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now, um, if you want to subscribe, then click on subscribe, and you'll see a little gear icon. Click on the gear icon and turn on notifications by ticking the box. And that way, our friends down at YouTube will send you an, a, an email, I think it is, normally, um, every time I upload a new video. So you'll have more stuff to watch, and hopefully, you know, you'll find those videos helpful too. Now, you'll also find me on Facebook, Instagram, Google+, and Twitter. And feel free to communicate through any of those portals. But I would ask you, please, to use the YouTube comments as your first port of call, uh, where you can pose any questions that you have. You may have some helpful hints, too. Um, I don't portray myself as being the Bible of all automotive knowledge. Far from it, in fact. There's many, many things that I learn by making these videos, actually. Uh, and from the comments that uh, the viewers leave behind because you know we have experts out there we've got engine experts we've got experts in transmission and so on I'm not an expert I, I don't consider myself an expert in anything um, you know I tend to be a jack of all trades and cover and do lots of different kinds of repairs but I enjoy the learning experience and what I do learn I pass on to my students and I think it's a good ethos to um, you know, to, to make them aware that they're, not, they're never going to know everything. Things are changing way, way too fast for us to keep up. There's a, you know, 100 years of motor cars now, motor car development for a mechanic to learn about. It takes more than a lifetime to do that. Okay, that's about it. I'll catch you guys later. Cheers. Over and out.